we'll start with number five, the user entity tags. What are they? A user entity tag is a way of identifying a categorization for a user based on a specific date range. So for example, you could use the user entity tag to define someone's department. And as they move departments, you can use that user entity tag to identify what department they were in at what specific time. So you can say for January through May, they were part of the development department, and then in June they moved to the QA department, uh, and that's where they are currently. Um, so why is that in our top five? Well, it allows this date effectiveness of custom field values. And what that means is that you can then report on uh, people's department in this example or whatever field that it is that you're using for an entity tag based on that date. So if you run a report in my previous example from January through July, you're going to see this user in Department A uh, in January through May, and then in June and July, they will have moved to another department, and they'll show up in that other department for those dates automatically. Um, the third bullet here is particularly useful uh, for utilization to exclude users in not employed timeframes. In OpenAir, you can set users to be either active or inactive, and they will um, show up or not show up uh, in a very binary fashion. But if you're running a, a quarterly report and they were employed in your organization for part of that quarter, uh, you want them to show up in terms of utilization numbers particularly for the part of that quarter that they were in, but you don't want their lack of time sheets entered during the time when they were not employed to count negatively against your utilization. And so entity tags allow that to be very date constrained so it doesn't affect your calculation. Um, and it really helps in reporting your organization structure, uh, employment status for folks year over year. Now, because we're going through top five here, and you may have noticed that we've been advertising our webinars have shrunk down to 30 minutes. Um, I have about five minutes per item, so I'm not going to be able to get into a lot of detail on any of these. But I did include my email address at the start of the presentation. Um, in case you have any questions on any of these, feel free to contact me. But I'll go back there really quick so you can pick it up if you need it. Uh, jshine at topstepconsulting.com, S-C-H-E-I-N. With that said, we're going to need to move on to the next item, the resource planner in OpenAir. This is, uh, for anybody who's using bookings in OpenAir, this can be a really good tool to improve the way your bookings are handled and the way that they look. Uh, what it is is it's a graphical method for managing bookings that allows you to create and modify and delete bookings right there on the interface. And it shows that utilization uh, in a graphic format. What I can do, um, I can give you a brief uh, demonstration. Give me just a minute. I'm going to show you what it looks like in our sandbox. Uh, and so it's configured specifically for demonstrations and testing that we've been doing. But there's configuration changes that can be made to this so you can see it in a manner that makes sense to your business. So here I am in the resources module under bookings and planner, and here's what I see. So this goes back to December of 2015, and this shows me here and all the projects that I was booked on. Now, granted, this is made up data, so unfortunately I wasn't uh, on seven, eight projects at a time. Uh, actually, I probably was, but that's not important. Uh, what you can do here is you can edit these bookings just by hovering over them, there's an edit booking link, a delete booking link, a clone booking link. Uh, it shows you what this is all about, how many hours, what's the percentage, who, who asked for me to be on this, uh, what's the project, etc. If I want to extend this booking, I just extended it. Um, so, and I can delete it here or modify it here. I can add new bookings with this plus sign over here. A lot of different things you can do from this interface. It's uh, pretty straightforward, pretty easy to understand. Um, you can also switch this to a client view if you want to see this in instead of by person. So you can see for the blue zoom 
client, you know, who's booked and when. We show you those kinds of views. There are bulk actions you can take on these as well. Um, which I'm not getting not going to get into today, but there's a lot of different features of this resource planner. If you are using bookings, it's well worth your time to at least investigate this and see if it's something that your organization can benefit from. Uh, and in terms of how to enable it and set it up, there's uh, switches that we can get for you that uh, I'm sure you're probably all familiar with open air internal switching systems. Uh, basically, you can provide that, you turn on that switch, and you'll have access to this planner. And then you can control which roles you want to have what access to this. So it's very similar to any of the other features in open air in terms of identifying who has access and who doesn't. Number three, the new report interface and the status of reports. This is kind of, I threw two in one here because I wanted to cover them both and the top six didn't make sense. Um, so <laughs> these didn't sound right. So what we're, gonna, what we're talking about here is in the last release that OpenAir put out in October of 2015, they released a new report creation interface. Um, my, there's a lot of different views. Some people love it. Some people hate it. Um, I personally think it's pretty good. I, I have, a, I have a, a fondness for it uh, because it's fairly intuitive and it feels really familiar to me. Uh, and the reason that it feels really familiar to me is because I've done you know, a fair number of pivot tables in Excel in my career. And the, the new report creation in OpenAir works a lot like pivot tables. Um, you basically are picking your columns, you're picking your rows, and you're picking your measures. Um, in, in terms of the, the interface then, you're not going to get anything different in terms of the formatting of the, of the open air reports or you know, how they produce their data. Nothing really behind the scenes has changed. What has changed is the graphical manner the user interface in which you would use to create those reports. Now, we've demonstrated this to every one of our clients that, that's on our release management um, offering. Well, I shouldn't say all of them. Uh, all of them that we've been able to set up meetings with, we've demonstrated this functionality. We've demonstrated this to you know, probably at least a dozen clients who aren't on our release management just because they've asked questions about it. I've yet to see anybody implement it, and I don't understand why. I think what it comes down to is just people have finally figured out how to use OpenAir's reporting interface, and after all the trouble that they've gone through to understand how it's currently set up, you know, you don't want to change. And I understand that. I would still recommend you look into it, um, especially if you are doing any kind of new initiatives, new report creation. You may find that this could save you a lot of time and a lot of uh, challenge in terms of training people how to create reports. Uh, and then the other item on this slide, the report status. Uh, this is a really useful feature that's been there for a few releases now, but again is something that I don't think too many people know is there or how to use. So let me show you that in our sandbox. So what I've done is I've gone over to the reports section, and I'm in this status area which you may not even have known it was there. And what I have here is a listing of all the reports in our system under this All tab. Uh, and it shows me the name, the owner, whether or not the owner is active, which could be really useful, who this report shared with, uh, are the people that are shared with active. When was the last time it was run? When was the last time it was saved? Now here's some really interesting information. How many times has it been run? How long does it take? How many times in the last day, the last week, et cetera? All these metrics about um, your reports in your open air system. When, is this a scheduled report? And if so, is it actively scheduled and at what time? And you can see all of this in one setting, uh, which is pretty useful. In particular, what it could be useful for is these actions that you can take. Uh, you can make bulk changes to these, to these reports. So for example, the most obvious example. 
is if you have a user who's left the company, but they have a dozen reports or two dozen reports or a hundred reports that they created, and now nobody can really modify them unless they proxy in as this inactive user, which you have to make the user active to do. Um, what you can do from here is you can select the report that you want to change, and you can say delete them, change the owner to whoever, yourself, uh, or remove them from the schedule. So in this case, I'd want to change the report owner from that inactive resource to an administrator, probably, that is active in the system or whoever is taking this person's play. And you can do that in one big bulk change and done. Uh, that can be really useful in maintaining reports. Other things you can do from here, you have this running tab. And what this allows you to do is see, here's all the reports that are currently running. Well, a lot of, a lot of you probably will not get much use out of this. For those of you in larger organizations, um, before I joined Top Step, I, I was managing open air for a company that had about 3,000 users. And some of the reports that we ran out of there ran and ran and ran and ran. And we actually got to a point where every now and then open air would contact us. Uh, we'd get contacted from open air support telling us we were dragging the performance of the server down. And at one point, they actually moved us uh, our reporting off to its own server because we were we were killing the system. Um, so what this would have done for me is it would have shown me what reports are running, how long have they been running, what's really taking the time, am I killing the system with these, and uh, or is someone else killing the system with these? So this is a good place to look if you find that suddenly open air has slowed down considerably could very well be that you've got a long report or a number of long reports all running at once. The last tab here is maintenance. And what this shows is here's all the reports that are owned um, by an inactive resource and, and scheduled. And so do you want to do something with these? It's a very specific screen uh, to show you just those reports that you might want to take action on. Uh, you probably do want to take action on. So that's the report status screen. Um, again, pretty useful. In terms of what you have to do to get this, you already have it. Uh, if you haven't seen it, it's just because you didn't know it was there and you haven't looked. Um, but you should have this already in your system. As far as the new reporting interface, that you have to request from uh, Open Air Support. And they'll have to flip some switches for you to get that enabled. All right. Number two, timesheet adjustments. Um, for some of you, this is going to be a kind of a duh moment. It's, it's like, yeah, we've been using these forever, and what do you mean this is new and, and unusual? Well, we have found um, that a lot of folks don't know this is there. Uh, and so I, I wanted to make this uh, a point in this presentation simply for two reasons. Number one, because it's so useful. And number two, because we've seen so many clients of ours who weren't aware that it was an option. Um, so what is it? Well, it's a real simple method for making changes to approved timesheets. And, and it's in our top five for those, for those reasons. It's, it's really simple. Uh, it's got a great audit trail so you can see um, what has changed. Um, so that's why we, we recommend that people implement it. Let me show you, uh, again, a quick demonstration of how this works. I'll go over to our timesheets module, and I'm going to click on one of my approved timesheets. And I see all this time that I put in on different things uh, for different customers. If I go to the Edit tab of this, where I would normally enter time, I can click on the Info button here, and I have this Adjust This Timesheet option. When I click on that, here's the timesheet that I entered. And you can see this message here, adjust the timesheet and then save it to review your changes and create a new adjusting timesheet. 
Well, so I was doing this, and suddenly somebody discovered that I'd put time against a project when it should have been on another project, which I'm sure never happens to anyone else. Um, but it happens, you know, fair, fair enough, fair amount of time to, for us. Um, so let's say that I needed to move this Unidome time uh, two hours on Wednesday. It should have been this you need somehow time instead. I saw the U and just got confused and put the time on the wrong project. All I have to do in here is delete that to, add that to, save. I uh, put in a little note as to why I did this. And, I, and it'll show you the, the change that I made right here. And then I save it. And what the system has now done is it's gone in and created an adjusting timesheet that moves those hours. And that's this right here. And of course, you can tell that's what it is because it adds this adjusted to the end of it. And there's my hours. If I edit this, it looks exactly like what I just changed. Negative two hours on one project, positive two on the other. And, and these don't have to equate. If, if this should have just been negative two hours, I could have just removed the two hours and saved it. I'd get an adjusting time sheet with just negative two hours. So that can be really useful um, when you find that there are problems with timesheets. Some customers have even gone uh, down the path of approving timesheets that they know are wrong um, with the intention of just running an adjusting timesheet right after they approve it. Uh, and that's, that's fine. I'm not going to say that I recommend that approach. Um, I'm much more inclined to tell you to reject those timesheets uh, and get the users to make those adjusting timesheet changes themselves um, so you don't actually have to have another timesheet uh, that created with those changes on it. But a lot of times you're in a pinch, users got on vacation, or you're in a hurry to get invoicing out the door, you want to just do it yourself. Uh, I can see you know, that makes sense. So that's adjusting timesheets. Um, those time entries will show up in reporting uh, so you'll be able to see that they were adjusted. It's all very clear in terms of an audit trail. Uh, makes it very transparent as to what was done. And it's got comments at every level so that you can input um, why this was done. Now, one thing you should note is that those comments aren't necessarily mandatory, which brings us to number one on our list. scripting in open air. Now, anybody that has worked with me uh, will know that this is, they could have guessed this one uh, would be number one before the webinar ever started. Um, I'm a big proponent of the scripting functions in open air. I've used them extensively and uh, have been very pleased with the results. So let me go through a bit of what this is and why I recommend it. Scripting in Open Air was introduced in the April 2014 release, um, but it really, uh, frankly, was kind of stinky. Um, right around the October 2015 release, and even more so, I'm sorry, in the uh, October 2014 release, and more so in the April 2015 release, they made significant improvements to their scripting engine. Uh, in particular, in the October 2014 release, they added a scripting center. Um, which removed scripts out of workspaces and a lot of the rig that went along with it and give you a nice little interface in which to build these. Um, so what is scripting in OpenAir? What they've done is they've put in a JavaScript-based method that allows you to alter data within OpenAir. Now, this, this slide could actually have used a what isn't it section as well because what I want to emphasize is that uh, it is not a method of altering the interface. People see the word JavaScript, and a lot of times they immediately jump to, oh, I can add buttons, I can add links, I can change this, I can change that. And that's not accurate with um, OpenAir's scripting. The JavaScript that you can put into these scripts in OpenAir is, is limited to changing data. Um, it's triggered by a form change or on a schedule. So they have two types of, of scripts. They have form scripts and scheduled scripts. And a form script 
will trigger when somebody saves a form or submits a form or even uh, in some cases approves a form. Uh, so you can trigger it when somebody saves their timesheet or submits their timesheet or when they approve an expense report or an invoice. Um, or you can run a script every day at noon uh, or you know, every weekend or whatever makes sense. They'll run, you can schedule them for as often as once an hour. Um, so just be aware of that. They are built within Open Air. This is not something that you're doing outside of the tool. It's right within the tool. And so what they've done is they've buffered it so that uh, you can't do anything, quote, unquote, harmful. You can't mess with their data integrity. You can't code something that will allow for a security breach. Um, all of it's within the tool, and it's governed by their engine and their interface. So it prevents you from you know, doing something you'll regret. Uh, so why is this in the top five? Well, we've found a number of uses for this. Um, it's been very useful in data validation, transformation, uh, data uh, transference in terms of copying data from one place to another. Um, found a lot of uses for this. It's relatively simple to create and maintain. A lot of the scripts are 20 lines of code or less. Um, do you need to be a JavaScript expert to do this? No. Uh, do you need to have some familiarity with JavaScript to do this? Yes. Um, there, are, uh, there are really good examples in OpenAir's documentation on this. And if you are interested, we can get you a link to the uh, scripting guide that OpenAir has put out. And you can see uh, just exactly how good their, their documentation on this is. It's really quite, uh, quite impressive. Uh, in my opinion, it's, it's a really good set of documentation. Um, so how do you enable this? Well, there's three switches that you need to enable to get scripting to run in your environment. And I've listed them here. These are items you'd have to contact OpenAir support and ask them to turn on for you. And then you'll get this, this ability to do these, these scripts. Um, now, in terms of why you would do this, what are some uses for this? Well, here's a few of the things that we've done. And this is only a few. In the last year, we have done at least 50 scripts for, for people um, for, for different purposes. Some of them have been really simple and short. Some of them have been fairly complex. Uh, in terms of the simple and short ones, if you look at the example uses, the first item there, validating form fields. Uh, we've had people who want one date to always be after another date on their form. Well, we can do that through a very simple script. That's about 12 lines of code. And what it does is ensure that those dates are in the right sequence and throws an error, uh, preventing the form from being saved if they're not. We can sum up values from one entity and add them to another. So one of the things that we've done is we've summed up, uh, for example, worked hours from people's timesheets, and we've copied that to an actual field on either a task or a project. So right now you can report on that data uh, through an open air report. You can just say, show me all the worked hours. But if you want to export that, uh, put it as part of an integration to another system, um, you need it in a field to do that. And so that was the purpose behind this, is that we wanted, they wanted that information to be pulled over to their finance system. And so we created a, a custom field and a script that did that. A um, couple of more complicated ones that we've done. Uh, for a client, we split their fixed fee revenue across the users who worked on a project. So if you know how the revenue recognition works in open air for a fixed fee, you basically get one lump number, and it's assigned to one person typically the project owner of the project. Um, what they wanted was they wanted, for utilization tracking purposes, uh, they wanted that dollar figure split proportionally across the users that worked on that project during that time frame. So we built a script that did exactly that. It calculated what percentage of the project was done by person A, person B, person C, and we distributed this fixed fee revenue across those people. Um, and then the last one, probably the most complex one that we did. Uh, we had a larger customer who had a pretty complex expense policy, uh, and they wanted that to be enforced programmatically within the tool. And so they basically sent us their expense policy, and we built uh, scripting, I won't say a script because it was a, a couple, 
that ensured that no expenses got into the system that didn't match their policy. Um, or in certain circumstances they did, but they were flagged uh, in open air so that a quick report could pull up all of the flagged expense reports for someone to review. Um, so those are some of the things we've done. Uh, there's many, many other uses for this. Anything that you need to do to manipulate data behind the scenes, as long as open air has exposed that table uh, that where that data is stored to be changed, a script can go in and do it. And we have not found very many tables that have not been exposed. I will tell you one that hasn't been exposed uh, that we wish had been is the proxy table. So we cannot set up uh, proxies automatically through a script. We've tried. We also are struggling a bit with uh, sending emails through a script, but there is new functionality with the latest release that we believe will aid in doing that. We just haven't had the opportunity to test it just yet. So there may be some new email abilities through the scripting engine as well. <clears throat> 